Can you write a guitar solo if you're an idiot? Or worse, can you improvise a guitar solo if you're an absolute idiot? The short answer to both these questions is yes. However, is it recommended? No. But why, you might ask. That's a very good question. Thank you for asking. Before I tell you why, let's quickly take a look at what improvisation means, okay? Take it away, Clark. According to Wikipedia, improvisation means... Did you say improvisation or improvisation? Improvisation. I say improvisation. 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 Just say improv. I'm improvising. It's not I'm improvising. Clark, just say improv. According to Wikipedia, improv means... The action of improvising. That's not very helpful, is it now? Writing music generally requires you to write to music beforehand. Improving music requires you to write the music in the moment as it's happening without premeditation. So as you can see, writing a solo and improvising a solo are essentially the same thing. The only difference is one is happening in real time, right? So that requires a bit more knowledge to accomplish. But chances are, most of the time, we don't have that knowledge because I'm guessing you're a guitarist. That's why you clicked on this video. If you're not a guitarist, Please don't watch this video. This is not for you, like, especially you like orchestra folk. You, you guys don't even improvise. You just read sheet music. What's up with that? Chances are, because of statistics that we gathered through research... What research? The research that we went through, me and you, Clark. The research, of course, yes. The statistics. We, we've, we have all the statistics. According to recent studies, 85% of modern guitarists do not know music theory. Is that a good statistic, sir? I can go higher, I could go 93 maybe. So most guitarists don't know theory, or they don't know how to improvise, or they don't know how to make up their own sounds. Well, there's a fix for this. Some people just understand in different ways. Not everyone can just learn the theory and know how to apply it. Just like not everyone can just learn the scales and not know the theory. Yes, you understand what I'm saying though. <laughs> so what we're going to do today is we're going to be improvising over this track. Psst, excuse me. I'm kind of tired, can I sit down? I don't care, bro. You can sit down if you want. There are no chairs. You, you don't have any chairs here, bro. Okay, stand up then. I don't I don't care. <laughs> so we're going to be working over this track. Uh, we're going to be improvising over this track. It's basically just four chords. It's in D minor. The weapon of choice today, the Enya X4 Pro Carbon. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Clark is going to talk a little bit about this later. But here's what's crazy. You can plug this in, bro. Crazy. It has a bunch of effects, so we're gonna be using that, plugging it right in and recording the guitar. Pretty simple stuff, dude. So before we play guitar, before we listen to the track, before we dive into music in any way, what is a solo improvisation? What is music? It's a language, correct? So before you use any language, you need to have something to say first, right? I can't just use English like A, B, C, D, F, G, <laughs> right? to piss. So before we delve into any music, we need to delve into ourselves, bro. It sounds a bit cheesy, but stay with me, okay? First of all, let's just say we want things to sound nice, okay? What is nice? We look at things that we like. So let's say I'm trying to find out what type of guitar licks I like. I can't just sit here and try to invent them. I need at least some sort of reference. That's why before we play, we usually should listen, see what we like, and understand why we like it. Like, oh, I like when people bend. Sounds beautiful. So we keep listening essentially to what we like. We keep learning, learning about ourselves through music. How great is that, right? So after you do that, am I supposed to just stand up? Let me finish, bro. Stop interrupting. Um, so after we do that for a while, we find out what we like. We start to internalize it. And then this stuff starts to come out of you, right? I said that a bit wrong. <laughs> Let me. We're gonna look at the chord progression. Usually when you're improvising, there's always some sort of chord progression, unless you just sit then. So the progression here is D minor, B flat major, G minor, and then A major or A dominant. So if someone tells you, hey, this is the progression and you still don't know what the track sounds like, which is what I'm doing to you now, what can we do? We just try to see what we can do with this progression, play it in a bunch of different ways, right? Go sit with Clark. Stand with Clark. Go stand with Clark. Bro, stop complaining. 
So here's a quick trick to make a chord progression sound less chord progression -y and more melodic is you just use the upper structure triads and an easy way to find them is to just play the bar chords and just look at the top three top three chords top three strings so whatever this chord has would be this bye have you Thank you for coming. By the way, there's not going to be like tabs or anything for this. You just, if you want to learn, you can learn like an adult, okay? So the first chord, D minor, would give us this on the top three strings. Second chord is B flat major, so we can either play that here or here. And both of these will give us different inversions. This one it would be this. That's wrong. It would be this. Whenever you have a third on the bottom of an inversion, that would be first inversion. And whenever you have a fifth, that would be second inversion. So in this case, we have a root position D minor, and then a first inversion B flat major. Then we have G minor, so this is going to be barred on the third fret. And then we have A major, I guess, so we can do this. D minor. It's way easier to play than bar chords anyway, right? So if you arpeggiate this, it would be something like... So let's listen to the score progression and see what's up. So did you hear something interesting with the chord progression? Excuse me. Ya Allah. I need to take a leak. I don't care. Piss on the floors if you have to, bro. Do you want me to piss on the floors? If you listen closely, the chord progression... I mean, it doesn't require as much close listening, honestly. There's a melody there. It just goes... So this is played over the first chord, the D minor. And it's basically just a fifth, a minor third, and major second. So if you play it here... You have to bring it down an octave. So just from the chord progression, we realize that we have a motif that we can build on. on. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? So I'm just going to play this motif itself, but I'm going to play it on the lower octave. boring so essentially we turned this motif into a little vibe but now we can develop that further we already know that this motif played on the higher octave here what if we mix those two in that next take let's try that brother let me put a little count in what is the count in bro i'll count in before recording i missed it Second time, I'm gonna play it higher. No. Kind of like opened up something familiar to us, showed it to us in a different light. So here's what's interesting about improvisation. Improvisation. We said we were gonna do improv, right? Improvisation. Bro, I literally have video proof of it. We said improv. We said improv. So here's the interesting thing about improv, is that it's not all like improv. What we're doing now is like we're doing something that most people would be able to do before they improv, right? Is listen to the track. And you don't need to have a guitar on you to just figure out the melody of the track itself. Because you can whistle this. I don't know, you're at work. Once we have that, we built the skeleton of what we want to do. If you, if you zoom in closer, you see all this blank here. This is all music, brother. The Enya X4 Pro Carbon. The Enya X4 Pro's top is made out of 95% purity carbon. It is much less likely to be cracked, scratched, or dented than wood. Wood. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. 
One of the good things about these guitars is the sound consistency. As you can see, we're just plugging it in directly into the computer and it's sounding absolutely wonderful. The ENIAX 4 Pro Carbon has built-in effects made possible by its pickup located somewhere in this hall. Cool stuff. This is absolutely dry. It's just a dry signal. Let's try some room reverb. If you would like to learn more about the ENIAX 4 Pro Carbon, then the link is in the description. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry, we're not done yet. We're not done. Let's record one more, and I'm gonna try to fill the music in between, but I'm just gonna be using the... The D minor scale, bro. Cool. Okay, so we filled it up a little bit in between, but I still feel like it's a little bit empty on motifs, but I'm not talking about like motifs, but like motive, like emotional motive. I feel like it would be nicer if we avoid playing this motif until um, later. Like, yeah, that's it. That's it. That's the story. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hint it in the beginning, something like instead of... <laughs> Thing like I, I think that's I think that's kind of similar let's try I'm doing this live right I'm stressed <laughs> please but towards the end of this I'm gonna try to match what the chord progression is doing so it'll be kind of more cathartic and we're still just using the skeleton that we built so easily backing track did it for, for ourselves no smartness Stroke. It's okay. I forgive myself. So if you really, so if you really, so if you really, yeah. So if you re-listen, so if you re-listen, so if you look at this, you can see the waveform of what we just played, right? This shows us where we played the notes. It shows us just like the intensity of the signal, basically. It doesn't show us the uh, where the note is. It's not like a MIDI thing, right? But if it was, imagine this the escalator of your solo. You never want your solo to be in one place unless that's what you want to convey. If you want to convey like something so opening, you start off low and then you gradually go up. Or you start off low, 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 and then you suddenly go up. So what we did here, let's see if we went gradual. So we're an octave higher now. We're higher now. We're acknowledging the motif now. Cool. So we're going back down now. And we kind of like turned around it with this like... It's just a triad. And then we're adding the fifth on the bottom. And then we're playing the major second. Adding octave on top.
Yi, 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 what are you doing, bro? Well, he told me to piss on the floors. Bro, there's fucking gear on the floor. You're a goddamn enigma. Go get paper towels, man. Fine. Fine, let me go get some fucking paper towels. Damn it, this guy. So what this turnaround lick did, turned us around to where we started. And then where we started was at the bottom. So now we can either rebuild like before, or we can do something unexpected. So now that the, the listener expects something like this, maybe we can change it up. I don't know. So what I'm doing here is I'm analyzing what I'm doing innately, right? I'm not thinking about what I'm playing. And I think that's what you should do too, but acknowledge what you do after, right? So I'm not gonna premeditate what I'm gonna play because it's improv, but I'm gonna see what this turnaround does to me. When I feel like I'm starting to go up and down at scales like this, I take a step back and I'm like, brother, don't do that. This is haram. Clark. Yo, yo. I'm so sorry, sir. You told me to clean the floors. So when you start playing pentatonics or scales and you can't get out of it, what do you do? Put the pick on the side, trust me. Put the guitar on the side. Sorry, any of music. I'm gonna put this on the floor. Isn't this carbon fiber though? Like it's against scratches. So I'm just gonna listen to this without the guitar in front of me. So I'm not gonna think in guitar, I'm gonna think in myself. I try to listen to it and imagine bigger chunks of motifs that we need to reach, like objectives. So the first objective here would be to match this instead of just hinting it in the beginning. So we already have one of those. We need to find something else that we invent that's not in the chord progression. The only way to do this while improvising is to do it when you're not improvising. That's how you are able to do it later when you're improvising. You know, so right now, like it's it's like it's normal what's happening to me, and like I'm kind of stuck. What I do is I stop thinking of melody and I start thinking more rhythmically. I swear to God, I didn't start recording. Well, I played the same rhythmic motif in different places and I built on it. So I'm, I'm gonna do that. So this is basically a length of the solo that you would essentially be improvising. How many basically and essentially do I need in a sentence? So I'm gonna delete whatever whatever I did here. We're gonna put this right next to the turnaround. See how it happens. See how it happens. Yep, that's what I said. So that's all we have so far. By the way, I'm using Glenn Fricker's Extinction Level Event. I have an affiliate link in the description if you want to grab that for yourselves. 
Like I literally just slapped it on. I didn't do any tweaking. I'm very, very lazy. So, is it possible to improvise if you're an absolute idiot, bro? Yes, but it's better to learn more about yourself, learn more about the music that you like before you start doing it, and then that will lead to better results. As soon as you start rambling, bro, take a step back and dive in. <laughs> I need to stop saying dive in, bro. If you want to grab one of these beautiful shirts, you can grab one right here or in the description. And I will see you next time, bros.